Welcome, everybody. I'm Angelo, and uh, in this session, I will talk about the Internet over time, over everything. Let's talk about IT and Azure. But why is important to us to talk about IoT? The focus of this presentation is uh, the Internet of Things because the use of Internet is now a common place with bits following all day long. And uh, in this session, we will review the use of Azure Cloud technologies and how we can use those services with all of the gadget, appliances, and mobile devices available to us. We will learn how to use Azure services with some of these devices and uh, how the Internet of Things service can be managed. The first part of this presentation is focused on the IoT, but what IoT means? IoT obviously means Internet of Things and um, is a, a more uh, intelligent way way to, um, to collect data coming from every device that we can assume as things and uh, bring this uh, information to the cloud, to the internet. And uh, in this scenario, we can find uh, a lot of examples from the simplest one that is the uh, remote uh, measuring temperature or more complex such as uh, analysis on uh, industrial machinery. And um, all this connection, all the uh, moving of this data uh, um, must be connected in a reliable and secure way to the cloud. But uh, Microsoft has developed uh, a custom version of its operating system called Windows 10 IoT in three editions. The lowest one is the Windows 10 IoT Core. IoT Core is thinking to test our solution uh, in chip boards such as uh, Raspberry, Minobor, and so on. And why uh, could be important develop on Windows 10 IoT Core? Because we have access to the universal Windows platform with our familiar API and with our familiar IDA, such as Visual Studio. We have other versions of Windows 10 IoT Core, or Windows 10 IoT, such as IoT for mobile devices, that uh, he has the our familiar um, user experience with the shell provided by Windows 10, and on it we can run uh, Windows 10 uh, universal apps, drivers, and mobile application. On the a uh, more complex uh, uh, version of Windows 10 IoT is called for industry devices. In this version, we have the desktop shell and we can run not only the universal Windows platform, but uh, the Win32 application too. And uh, so why use it? Because uh, we have Visual Studio and uh, the .NET framework running on the universal Windows platform. But we can uh, um, we can use another way to run our C sharp code or our C sharp solution on the IoT devices. And this is uh, .NET Core. With .NET Core, we can install uh, all the tools, all the framework that we are confident with on the um, operating system based on Linux and uh, Windows and Mac 2. But the very important thing for uh, an IoT developer is to have a board run running uh, and a Linux operating system such as uh, Ubuntu or such as Debian, Raspbian, and so on. Install on it uh, .NET Core and execute all our .NET code and in, uh, in a way to recycle all, um, all our knowledge. But recently, Microsoft has presented another operating system, another way to access to the 
IoT world. This is called Azure Sphere. Azure Sphere is a, a new Microsoft operating system based on, uh, on Linux. And uh, this uh, operating system uh, has its focus on the security, on the efficiency, on the real time processing unit, and uh, is a very secure operating system. Because uh, in uh, an IoT solution, uh, security is one of the mo most important values that we can have. But the first device that is present, that is designed to uh, support Azure Sphere operating system is the MediaTek MT3620 that we can uh, uh, that we can see at the bottom of the slide. But the security is uh, a very important point because we cannot um, take we have to not take care about uh, uh, hardware problem uh, um, hardware security issues such as uh, uh, meltdown spectre and so on because the solution are designed to be the most secure uh, that you can imagine let's talk about the second part of this session that is focused on how to build an IoT solution on Azure. We have to think to an IoT solution in three fundamental parts. The first one is uh, um, regards about the device connectivity. We have our board, our device, our sensor, uh, or whatever you want. And we have we need to connect it in a secure way to the cloud. But, but to connect it, after connecting it, we have to process the data coming from this board that we uh, that can be a temperature sensor or can be an industrial machinery or another kind of solution. This data can be processed, analyzed, and managed by the cloud platform and we can we can manage the device too we can manage the device identity we can manage the uh, update of the operating system of the solution and so on and the latest part is the um, final user um, architect the is the latest part that we design in IoT solution and uh, it is linked to the final user and we have the business connectivity process and the presentation layer in this part we uh, realize a system that sh can show to the final user all the data uh, elaborated or analyzed by the cloud platform as many of us know azure as a very very a very enormous number of services in this slide we can find uh, um, a part of the services dedicated to the to iot solution as the first part to, we have to manage the connectivity between the cloud and the devices and we have services such as the iot app and the event tab as the second part we have the um, stream process and we have services on Azure, such as the stream analytics that uh, um, have, the, have to move all the data coming from the board to other services. Other services such as the storage one, that, um, such as a SQL DB, uh, storage DB, storage table, and so on. This data can be analyzed or in, or in real time or after collecting it in services such as EndUp, Academy Insight, or machine learning model. And uh, we can uh, provide uh, some services to manage the identification of our devices. And uh, so we can, in every moment, we can know uh, which device is connected to our solution, what it's doing, and uh, uh, if we are running it, out of program. After this, we have the backend part that realizes the business logic of our solution. 
on the one of the latest part, we have the user experience presentation, and we have services such as um, App Service or WebUp or mobile application that provide a more human understanding model to uh, represent the data coming from an IoT solution, IoT devices, and so on. But see the connectivity devices part. I'm sorry. We have four way to um, to connect our IoT solution to a cloud service provider. We have the cloud uh, the cloud gateway that is a direct connection between the device and the online service. And we can use this strategy when we have an, IO, an IP capable devices it can establish a second your connection across the network. And uh, on the second way, we have uh, an, a connection through the field gateway. The field gateway is uh, uh, another physical component that uh, um, collect all the devices uh, of our solution and connect all these devices to the cloud solution. Why uh, we have to use it? We can use it in uh, industrial scenario when uh, we use uh, uh, high specific connection protocols such as uh, OPC or C or AP5 uh, uh, or when we have a short range connection between the devices such as Bluetooth or Zigbee or when our device cannot uh, establish itself a secure connection to our online solution using protocols Secure protocol connection such as the TSL, TLS, or the SSL. Um, at the third way, we have a, a custom cloud gateway. We can use the custom cloud gateway when uh, the protocol that we want to use to connect uh, our solution to the cloud is not supported natively by the cloud service provider of the cloud service. And we can use the service to transform the protocol uh, before that he is connected to the cloud. The latest one is uh, um, this um, is uh, the union of field gateway and a custom gateway, and uh, we can use it to use the best of the both technology, and such as we have uh, some devices connected to a field gateway that are connected by a custom VPN to the cloud gateway um, through the uh, custom gateway. But the second part is the device identity and provisioning and store. At this part, we have a device identity authority. This uh, authority stores all the information to validate the device that because we cannot uh, uh, admit that one uh, unknown devices could be connected to our network or to our service. We have uh, another service that is called the device registry store. In this store are collected all the metadata related to the devices, from, such as the, the name, the version of the solution that is running, uh, alert such as uh, there's an alert on the space, there's an alert on the connection, there is a, an update, and so on. But we can build some device provisioning API that are custom API that we create to allow to the device to present itself to the, de to the device identity provider uh, to simplify our work. The device state store is another part of the architecture architecture of an IoT solution. In this store, we can collect all the data uh, about a device. At the other part is the stream processor. And the stream processor allows to us to transport the data without applying any kind of transformation and bring this data to the uh, other algorithms, other services that uh, analyze and transform our data 
coming from the IoT solution, such as the temperature or such as other kind of data. And on this data, we can perform or a simple analysis, analysis or we can perform a machine learning model to have a prediction of the future data that we can receive from the IoT solution. The other part is the storage one. In the storage, we can uh, collect all the uh, uh, old information came in by the devices, and we can use those to analyze uh, and to uh, perform a machine, learn a machine learning model on this data. At the, the one of the latest parts, we have the hub backend. We can assume the hub backend, such as the implementation of the business logic, the business model of our solution. And uh, we can implement a layer abstraction of our devices or a group of devices to to perform a more simple uh, manage of the devices. We can, uh, we can manage the security uh, of the user and of devices. In this way, I can say, OK, you are connecting to the uh, user experience part of my solution. You are the final user of the solution. You can see only some data, such as the, the chart of the, the status of some component. You are the IT admin of the solution. You can see more data than the latest, uh, the, the final user. As the part of user experience, we can, we can uh, find one or more websites that show the information uh, coming from the analytics or machine learning or from the storage. We can find web API to represent and uh, all the data coming from the, uh, the solution to other applications, such as uh, desktop client, mobile client, uh, and so on. This is an example of the uh, user experience uh, that we can perform running an IoT solution. We have uh, at the left part of the presentation the uh, and the engines of the of an plane, and on the left, on the right part, we can find some chart about the single component of this solution, and we can we can find also other charts and other vital information of our solution. The very latest is a uh, and no um, is a the business integration a connect action and gateway. In this part, we can think to uh, connect our solution with other business services, such as CRM or ARP. We could have in our warehouse an IoT device to regulate the shipping status of the order. And this IoT solution is connected to a CRM to manage, um, to manage the warehouse. Let's talk with another services as a specifically thinked to the IoT in Azure. I'm talking about the Azure IoT Suite. Azure IoT Suite is a, a collection of, of, of services uh, of uh, running on Azure, and we have a, a pre built model customized solution. And, and uh, we can easily integrate it in our existing business model, or we simply can test it or learn how to, um, how to build an IoT solution. All the examples provided on GitHub about the IoT suite can be uh, our solution, a ready-to-go solution, and we can uh, uh, assume it as a remote monitoring predictive maintenance, and so on. The only thing you have to do to provide an example of how 
the Azure IoT suite example that is working is a, an IoT uh, and an Azure subscription free or a trial or or a, a, an enterprise subscription and so on and Visual Studio or other tools that you can find in the reference of the project um, uploaded on GitHub. But after this part of presentation, I want to introduce you to the demo that I will perform for this session. This is a very simple application of IoT solution. We, could, we can use Windows 10 IoT Core and one of the services uh, of Azure, in this case, uh, one of the cognitive services, to remote controlling the light in uh, our in a room or uh, in uh, other contexts. But let's start with the checklist to build this solution. We uh, we need a Raspberry or a, a, a board suitable with Windows 10 IoT Core. An internet connection, two LEDs, uh, uh, a breadboard, four jump wire, and two resistors. But first, we have to see how uh, Windows 10 IoT Core uh, named the GPIO pin on the Raspberry Pi. We have uh, this list of the GPIO that we will use in the solution to connect to the to the lab or to other devices such as a temperature reader or and so on. And we will connect the LED to this four pin, the two to give energy to the to the diode and two to give the signal of switch on or switch off to the LED. This is an example provided by Fritzing to how to connect the LEDs and the resistor to the Raspberry. But first, let's talk about Azure Cognitive Services. Azure Cognitive Services is one of the parts of Azure Services uh, in the context of artificial intelligence. We have some services to integrate in our solution some cognitive capabilities, such as the vision API that can perform an, an image recognition or a photo recognition of, the, of what is happening in this picture. We have the speech recognition that is a, a cool solution to talk with uh, our solution, our uh, our example, or what do you uh, have to do with your code, and uh, such as we can do uh, a simple uh, a simple sentence to our Raspberry and say, "Hey, switch off this light, do something, or do other good stuff." We have the language understanding API that provide the capability to our solution to really understand what we are saying. We have not to uh, provide a couple of um, restricted sentences to realize our solution. But uh, uh, after I've trained our model, as uh, we can see in the other slide, we can say other uh, way to uh, to expose the same concept in our language that we uh, have not uh, predicted. We have the knowledge that is based on the um, that is based on the, the being power to uh, receive information about an argument. Or we have the search API that we can perform a very useful research in our solution. But uh, the Azure Lewis means uh, language and understanding intelligence service and uh, it can integrate a natural language understanding in our solution. As we can see in uh, this uh, demo, we can say, hey, switch on, switch on this, switch off this, 
in very, very different way that we um, have not predicted. But how we can do to create a, this solution? Obviously, obviously, we have to run uh, Visual Studio in Visual Studio, a new UWP solution. We can open a blank Universal Windows app, and uh, at the first part of the building process of the solution, we have to write some lines of code in the main page XAML class. Uh, we have this method to to say to Windows 10 IoT Core, hey, I am on an, an IoT devices and uh, I want to uh, I want to perform something like uh, uh, a GPIO that I will call uh, LED green pin or yellow LED or LED yellow pin, uh, and I want to set this GPIO as the output because we are uh, um, coming out a, sen a signal from the Raspberry to the, the uh, to the devices. Uh, in other cases, such as a, a remote temperature monitoring, we have to set it to, to GPI or pin driving mode with input because it has the capability to read some information coming from, from this sensor. After this, we have to, um, uh, to introduce in our code all the entity that we will provide on the uh, Lewis uh, um, on the Lewis solution, such as uh, the entity that uh, are the component that we want uh, assume in our solution, such as the green LED and the yellow LED, and uh, the entity and uh, op or all the entity that are a combination of the yellow and the green. One. After this, we have to create a new class that will um, that will parse the JSON coming from the Lewis and artificial intelligent application to see what is uh, saying to us. To do this, we have to insert a, a new string with the connection string to the Lewis services, as you can see, an example uh, of this in this slide, and, um, and the parser of the JSON. But how we can set up a new Lewis solution? Simply, we have to go on lewis.aa and uh, go to my apps. After this, we have to create a new application. We have to name the, we have to provide the name of the solution and the language culture of our solution. Um, the language culture can be, uh, can be uh, selected. So, so we have to um, take care to uh, take the good, the, the best choice that uh, for for our solution. After this, we have to create uh, the intents of our solution. In this case, we can assume the switch of intent that is uh, uh, an intent to light off the lights. And uh, after this, we have to say to Lewis, "Hey, I have thinked to four five." Five six a sample mm, to sentence to explain to uh, expose this concept in our language. The same thing we have to do to the other entity to the other intents the switch on one. After this, we have to create the entities of our solution. Um, we can assume the entity to which is the the thing that we want to uh, control with this uh, 
uh, machine learning model. And we had to create uh, the first one that is a, a simple type of entity such as green light, another one that is the yellow light, and this is a simple type of entity. And we have to create all entities because we could have the uh, capability to uh, switch off both the lights of all the lights connected to this solution. And to do this, we have to select the composite type. This is an example to how build this uh, uh, entity model. In at the left part of the presentation, we can find the green one with the entity type set as simple. And on the right part, we can find the composite one, all lights, that is uh, composed by two, two child, the green light and the yellow light. After this, we have to, uh, um, to insert in this model uh, some way to, uh, to identify this concept, uh, such as green and other way to say green in our language. And we have to do the same with the, the yellow at the all lights. After this, we have to train our model so he can learn uh, what we want to do with our solution and what we are saying in this uh, text parsing. After this, we can test our solution, uh, further integrate it in uh, our Wizard Studio Universal Windows Platform providing some example of, uh, uh, of sentences. And we can see the score that we can, uh, that can be provided with this sentence. After this is uh, almost done because uh, we have to publish the, uh, the solution. And after this, we receive a connection string the connection endpoint that we that we have to insert in uh, the uh, parsing class of the of the JSON, but uh, the JSON structure that is provided by, by the Lewis model is something like this. We have the query at the first line, and we can see what the Lewis services uh, has understand. We have in a case of automation turn off. So, and um, at the third line, we, we have the score uh, of this intent. At the second part, we have the score about the entities of this query. We can find uh, at the entities part that uh, uh, the Lewis model. Um, as uh, predicted, that we can mm, we we want uh, switch off all the lights and uh, it recognize our intent using two keywords: all and lights. At the third part, we can see the composite event, the composite entities that is uh, uh, all the lights, but Let's see on Visual Studio how to implement this. Come on. As you can see, we are on we are on Visual Studio and we have built the main page XAML. We have built a simple user interface application with a text box, a text box where we can type the sentence to send the to our I the 
IA in, in Lewis services. At the second part, we have the GPIO initialization part with the, the definition of the pin when we connected the LEDs and the analyzer tool and the web client with the, uh, the connection string to the Lewis endpoint. To do this, we have to connect to the Raspberry I'm sorry. We compile it. Distribution and no. Why? I'm sorry, but I have a connection problem to my Raspberry Pi. I will try to reboot it. Windows Boot Manager choose your Linux and then click next. I'm trying to reboot my Raspberry. Oh, uh, yeah, I am. You can see. Oh. Okay. Uh, Excellent. Okay, I was, I'm trying to connect again to my Raspberry Pi, I don't know why. You don't want to connect. My device is Reboot again. Like installation installation disk. Choose your settings. Yeah, Angela, we we're not seeing the screen where you're working. We're seeing another screen. Oh, I don't know why. I'm okay. trying to. We got this. 
you can see my screen. I'm trying to connect to my Raspberry Pi, but it's not responding. Let's share again. Choose my screen. Okay. But. Uh, okay. But. I, yeah, I am trying to connect to the device portal of my Raspberry Pi, but uh, I can see to the other display connected to it that the it want to boot again. It was working until 10 minutes ago. Cool demo, very cool demo. I'm trying again to reboot it. Try again. I see remote client. Okay. We probably we are. <laughs> I really don't know why it's not responding. I'm sorry, but if you want to want to start, uh, I think that's the nature of the uh, in my in my website that you can find on the latest slide. You can see a post about this solution, and you can find. Uh, a video with this uh, uh, solution uh, running uh, correctly. I'm I'm sorry, folks. Hey, that's okay. That, right, this is the nature of live live yeah. presentations and live content. Right, these things happen. And hey, like you said, it, you know, for our folks that are interested, want to see a little bit more, there is a recorded video out there on the blog that you can check out. Mm -hmm. We'll make sure that that we 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 get that link from you and we'll attach it to this video so that folks can yeah. follow up and learn more. At this slide, you can find some contact detail about me. And uh, uh, this is the web, my personal website. And um, I think that the post uh, will be available in, a, in about 10 minutes. Great. That's, that's perfect. Um, do we there are uh, also the... Uh, All right, great stuff. That was great stuff. Uh, that's the nature of an IoT presentation. Sometimes, Sometimes the devices are finicky. You know? Right. <laughs> so, cool. Um. <laughs> All right, so I, I'm not seeing any questions in the chat room right now. I see a lot of people saying thanks so much. Uh, thanks for your efforts inspiring uh, us to dive more into IoT. Um, and no judgment here. This is a very safe space. They're they're saying so. Very cool. But very polite from our friends in the in the chat room. So awesome. Oh my gosh, you okay. have some great links so there. Oh yeah, awesome links. Thank you so much, no guys. Worries. No worries. All right. <laughs>